All right, let's talk about Fred Warner, linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, you know, I've for a few years now been consistently putting him at number one in my off-ball linebacker rankings that I do every year in the preseason. And, you know, when I first did it, I felt like there was some pushback. There's no pushback now. It's almost just accepted as a fact he is number one in the, you know, in the NFL. He's really good at playing linebacker. And let's talk about what he did. He had a really big day uh, on Sunday Night Football, as did basically everyone wearing a red uniform in that game. But yeah, let's talk about, you know, starting off with this play, the one you see on your screen, a center is going to run up and block him. It's going to be a run to the bottom of the screen. That's the way this play works. As you see, Dallas' center gets up and, I mean, really isn't really helping anyone out, right? This is a mismatch. You have an offensive lineman going up against a linebacker. This is something that you do expect the offensive lineman to win. You know, sometimes it's harder when you have to, like, double team and then get off the double team and block a linebacker. That's usually where it's difficult. But in this scenario, that's not the case right here. I mean, you have Fred Warner, you know, you know uh, out here. This feels like a pretty good situation. But watch Warner kind of back up to where the run is going, and he gets, you know, disengages with the contact and is able to get past that offensive lineman and be in position to try and help make a play. Now, for Dallas, it's still a pretty good situation. Tony Pollard has a little bit of space here, even though, you know, right off the bat, looked like it was getting blown up. Pollard did a good job of running to get to the outside right here. But still, for Fred Warner, we're just talking about his impact, right? And he did a pretty good job of just making sure that he, you know, was able to get in position to try and help make a tackle. However, this play is not done, and this is one of the things that seems to separate the good linebackers from the great linebackers. Watch him be able to punch that football out. It's the ability to make splash plays that is so important for Warner, and listen, did he get a bit of a lucky bounce with that ball bouncing off of one of his own teammates' leg and then staying in bounds because of that? Sure, but it's fumbles, right? There's always a bit of lucky bounces going on there. So for me, I would just put this straight up as a really good play by Fred Warner to make something like this happen. And also in more just like traditional plays, you know, this time it's going to be, it's actually a tight end who's going to go up and block him. It is once again going to be a run. This time it's going to be more of a run up the middle, uh, you know. Again, this is less of a mismatch. This is tight end against linebacker here. Still is just, you know, one-on-one -on -one matchup. Who can win here? As you see, you're going to see the tight end kind of, you know, go up. And he's in position. I mean, this isn't like, oh, you know, tight end wasn't able to get over or something like this. But Warner just shoves him aside, gets over, and helps make that tackle. I mean, that's just, that's kind of just run defense football, right? Go out and win your one-on-one -on -one matchup. If you can win your one-on-one -on -one matchup, it just does so much good for you and so much frustration for the offensive coordinator. When you're dialing up plays offensively, pretty much all you're doing in the running game is trying to figure out how to, you know, get away with leaving someone unblocked, you know, go somewhere else with it, figure out, okay, we're leaving this player unblocked, so let's get the ball somewhere else. When you have someone like Warner who just wins those one-on-one -on -one matchups, it just frustrates you because you, you know, you, if you need guys to make their blocks essentially for the running game to work. And Warner's obviously not the only guy who wins his one-on-one -on -one matchup, but when San Francisco has like a few of those guys that you just trust to win consistently. It makes the you know running game so difficult to pull off. He also does a lot of little things that are just really good. I mean, his coverage, you know, very well known at this point. Incredible coverage linebacker. I think the best zone coverage linebacker in the game. Uh, you know, the way that he just has that feel for zone, understands how these things work. And like, this is a good example of what he can do well. Where So for Dallas, again, kind of with the Madden angle here, you can't see the three players who are off screen towards the left, but there are three players who are off screen towards the left, two eligible receivers towards the offense is right. So for Warner, that's where he needs to be looking, right? He's the middle linebacker on this play, so he's covering over the middle. But, you know, just think about this logically. The way you do this is you number the receivers, so the receivers on the left are numbered 1, 2, and 3, with 1 being closest towards the sideline, so the number 3 receiver on that play, there needs to be someone to pick him up, and if Warner is looking towards his, uh, you know, the, this right at the screen, there's two eligible receivers there, there's two uh, San Francisco players who can pick them up. For Warner, he has to be looking over in that direction, and he just, he understands this. Like, watch how right when this play begins, he immediately looks up, sees a Dallas player who was in the slot there, the number three receiver, picks him up, and is in perfect position to try and make a play. Here's part of the issue, is that that Dallas receiver is not going to be running over the middle, where Fred Warner's quote-unquote zone is. He's going to be running further deep. And to me, this is also what separates the good from the great line 
linebackers is, you know, good linebackers, they cover their area, right? If you go under area, they're able to make sure that you don't give up anything. But the great linebackers have the understanding of knowing that at the end of the day, your job isn't to cover grass, your job is to cover the defenders. And watch how Warner is able to go back and really, I mean, at that point, that's not a throw that Prescott can make. It really wasn't. Prescott had to go elsewhere and he just threw a check down instead, uh, you know, a lot of linebackers, I think, in that scenario, give up space that Prescott could maybe decide to make a decision on. Uh, you know, he, that did not happen on this play, and that's what Warner does. That's just so effective, and what you know, what he does is so good. Heading over to this one, this is one that the broadcast feed brought up, and for good reason. It's an interesting play where, again, not my best graphic, admittedly, but you see Fred Warner, I've circled him in yellow. The zone he's supposed to cover is the one in white. Basically the exact same thing as last time. And if you you know count the Dallas receivers in the area, once again, there's three receivers who are lined up on the line towards the offense's left. Again, I think they kind of saw that play and said, wait a second, let's keep doing that stuff. Let's, you know, make sure we have several players go further down the field because at the end of the day, we're getting wide receivers on linebackers. That's a mismatch. I'm going to cut to this angle because it's a little bit clearer to see, but you see Fred Warner. He's the one who I've circled in yellow right here. Number three for Dallas is running that route where basically he's going to try to get into Fred Warner's zone. He's trying to get Warner to pick him up essentially, but then he's going to run just a, a deep route towards the sideline and basically trying to get generate a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, but with a wide receiver linebacker situation, which is obviously just a massive mismatch. I mean, we've seen Fred Warner do pretty good work in the run game against an offensive lineman. Can he do good work in the receiving game against a wide receiver? Well, watch how right off the bat, you know, Warner, uh, I don't want to say takes the bait because this is still what he's supposed to do. Like, this is still his job is to make sure he covers this receiver. He can't let him just go, you know, completely by and have no one cover him, right? So this is the correct play by Warner to stay deep. And again, part of what makes this Niners defense so good so consistently now is how everyone just has such a good understanding of who they should be covering at each moment. And watch how when, you know, uh, the receiver runs down the field. There is a bit of space. Like, Brandon Cook's here. That's number three for Dallas. He did get a little bit of space. There's no denying it. But not a ton of space, right? It's, I'm not... For 100%, Brandon Cooks won this matchup, but the fact that Fred Warner is even keeping it competitive and still kind of forcing a difficult throw for Prescott, has to throw it down the field, has to make it accurate, Cooks is going to end up having to make a sideline type catch. Like, this is, you know, good. As you see, Cooks can't quite make the play, and I think if Prescott threw that one a little bit earlier, it could have been a catch, but at the same time, a lot of times a defender's job isn't to give you no percentage chance to make a play, it's just to make it difficult and make it harder on the offense to make a play, and that's exactly what Fred Warner does, is he makes these plays not impossible, but really hard, and that's what he did on this play, and it worked, so even when you get a clever play call to get a wide receiver on a linebacker, when that linebacker is Fred Warner doesn't quite work out so well. Even when you put an offensive lineman on Fred Warner in the run blocking game, doesn't quite work out that well. And if you don't do that, well, then it really doesn't work out. So yeah, Fred Warner, probably the best off-ball linebacker in football, has been that for several years now. Uh, is he going to win a defensive player of the year award? I don't know. Uh, it's really hard for an off-ball linebacker to win it. Especially with how, you know, like what TJ Watt already has eight sacks and, you know, if a edge rusher racks up sacks, going to be hard for a different player to win it. Uh, usually, unless you have a narrative like Gilmore did. Uh, and maybe, maybe Warner has that narrative. I don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting to see though. Definitely one of the best defensive players in the league though. I think that goes without saying, in my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.